What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make cheap horsepower for your motorized bicycle. So after watching this video, your bike is going to be flying. We're going to be talking about spark plugs, top ends, decking the head, modifying your exhaust, port matching, all things that will make your bike go faster. Okay, so the first way of making free horsepower on a motorized bicycle engine is freeing up the old uh, stock exhaust. So you can buy banana pipes, you can buy expansion chambers, you can even buy old dirt bike pipes that will work. Those do increase the two-stroke effect opposed to just a header and a muffler. But if you're trying to stay on a budget, this will actually work. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is everybody knows, or at least if you don't, here's how to do it. You can take this cap off and it'll improve airflow. But if you want to keep this thing quiet and still get optimal performance, I'm going to show you how to do so. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen this. For the video, I have it already loosened pretty good. And I'll show you what I did. So basically, uh, most people know this as a sleeper mod. It's a pretty cool idea, honestly, because I never would have thought of it. But basically, when you pop this cap off, you normally have a tube about yay high, and that will stick up into the muffler, and therefore making the exhaust gases come here, but then have to be forced to come back up and then get out. And that's kind of what that tube does. It goes in there, and it just redirects the exhaust flow so it gets quieter. That's great if you live in a, you know, a neighborhood or something like that. But if you want to get more performance, what you can do is take a sawzall or a reciprocating saw or an angle grinder and just cut the end of the exhaust tube off. And when you put it back on, everything is going to fit the same, but it's going to be a little bit louder and give you more performance. The second thing you can do if you don't uh, choose to do that is you can take a drill and just drill some extra holes in the exhaust cap. It's basically just more outlets, so whatever gas, um, as I explained earlier, doesn't go in that tube, it'll come out through these holes, and therefore, you know, increase airflow. So that's basically how to modify the stock exhaust. You can either cut the exhaust tube out, or you can drill some extra holes. And the other thing that I wanted to mention that a lot of people don't talk about, there's no point of modifying your exhaust if it leaks. So I've applied some ultra copper uh, sealant, which is really good stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some of it for you guys. It is a uh, silicone sealant that basically just seals up exhaust really well. And I definitely recommend it for, you know, exhaust leaks. You can buy a gasket, but that's like 8 or 9 bucks every time your exhaust leaks or you want to take it off. This way, you can buy 8 or 9 bucks of this stuff and never have to worry about it again. So the second way of making cheap horsepower is gapping your spark plugs or better yet, upgrading the spark plugs themselves. Uh, to gap a spark plug, you won't need much. You can get a feeler gauge for like 5 or 10 bucks, and that will solve the problem. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec. But I want to more or less compare the spark plugs themselves. So first, we have a Great Master, which a lot of bullet trains use. And, you know, it's a decent plug. Again, these are plugs to get you going, and these will probably not even last a year. Um, like I said, I'm sure guys have had luck with them, but generally, these don't last as long as the NGKs do. The Z4C... Again, you can tell that brand there. Uh, it's a great plug, and, you know, it comes with your kit. Again, same story as this. Here's another newer style. It There's a brand right there. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. And, again, Z4C. So these are what comes with your kits, and, you know, they, they do the job. They have removable caps, so they're somewhat high quality, but there's better alternatives like these two here. We have a B7HS, which is a great starting point. We have a BR6HS, which again, another start, great starting point. The reason I say starting point is because spark plugs are all different. Whether you're running it in a 212 or a motorized bicycle engine, every engine is different and there's no set plug for a set engine. For example, if you have an exhaust upgrade with more airflow or you know different heat ranges, etc., um, that plug's going to be good for you. So, for example, generally on PK80s, you know, 66 slash 80 cc's, the B6HS is going to run you pretty good. Uh, but coincidentally, uh, my bullet train, which this plug came out of, I put a B7HS in it and it ran awesome. Uh, all my bikes currently are running B6HS's just because I'm testing that Pacific plug. But there's also, I'll throw a picture right here, there's a B8HS, um, the list goes on and on. Uh, the B8HS is good for the YD100 which I'll throw up another picture, is a great uh, starting point for that motor. So, I know it seems confusing at first, but the bottom line is to just get an NGK plug. 
All right, so with that all out of the way, now I'm going to be showing you how to use the feeler gauge. All right, so I'm going to show you how to gap the plug in a very simple form. So you can see when we open up our feeler gauge, the first thing that you guys are going to notice is it's in metric. It is in 0.6 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter, and you have to do a quick Google search for what you're shooting for. But here's a quick number. So if I'm shooting for 35 thousandths of an inch, what most of you are going to have to do, uh, that translates to 0 0.8 millimeters. So let me find that here. We got 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.75, and 0.8 millimeters. So what you want to look for is when you go ahead and insert it onto the electrode of the spark plug, you want to take note that it is a firm gap and that it's not wobbling around too much. And if so, you're wanting to go ahead and tap it on the table a couple of times. And you can see right there it actually feels pretty good. So, uh, feeler gauge, great upgrade, um, you know, something to definitely consider purchasing to really dial in the uh, performance of your engine. I'm not going to be getting into ignition timing, that's a way too advanced for this video, but having proper gap on your spark plug is definitely a, you know, must. Alright, so the third performance tip I'm going to be sharing with you is the carb needle adjustment. Basically, the carb needle in a nutshell controls uh, throttle positions from quarter throttle to three quarters of throttle and what that basically means is that if you go ahead and lower the clip to where this point is and you lower it a little bit uh, to full rich that means your bike is going to run and I recommend keeping it this way for break-in it's going to run super rich two strokes generally like to be a little bit leaner so that it can produce maximum power so what I recommend is moving it somewhere to the middle setting that way, you know, you'll have a somewhat, and I'm not going to quote you on this, 50-50 fuel-to-air ratio mix. Because um, you don't want to go too lean, right? Because if you go too lean, you can possibly blow up your engine, and, you know, that's never good. With the needle adjustment, though, you're pretty safe if you do that. If you go too lean on jetting, um, on full throttle, that engine is spinning at six, 7,000 RPM. You can do a lot more damage that way. So, yeah, go ahead and put it in the middle setting, and your bike won't four-stroke or bog. So the fourth mod I'm going to be showing you is how to increase compression on your two-stroke engine. Now, what a lot of guys say is two-strokes don't like a lot of compression. This is totally true. This is more for slight compression increase that will effectively increase power and to get this to seal properly. A lot of you guys, if you've been in the hobby for long enough, have experienced a head gasket leak, which basically means your cylinder head isn't sealing properly. And that could be many things. There could be casting flaws in the cylinder head itself, or the cylinder could have pitting on it from factory. This is very common. Um, so this mod is more for reliability and a little bit of power. So one thing I did want to mention before we start decking the head on a motorized bike engine is you can go ahead and make yourself some gaskets. Now what I've done is went to my hardware store, picked up some Felpro material, and it works great. Uh, you can make base gaskets, intake gaskets, even exhaust ones you get the high heat stuff. Uh, even though it doesn't anything to do with the head gasket, it is still a great option for keeping the air leaks away. Alright guys, so now we're going to go ahead and actually start the process. Now what I've got here is some 120 grit sandpaper. What this is going to do is go ahead and get the big nicks and uh, grooves out of the cylinder body and then after that we'll go ahead and use 600, 1000, etc. But basically the motion involves doing somewhat of a figure 8 when you face the cylinder. So you can see I'm going like that. And as you keep doing that, you can also go in circle motion. Uh, but what this is going to do is just put a consistent metal finish all over the cylinder. So when you put your head and your head gasket on, you know it's going to seal a lot better. And you can use a thousand grit at the end to really get a mirror-like finish. Uh, just don't go too smooth because you can easily ruin the sealing ability of the cylinder. But you just keep going around like that. And you'll do this for quite a while, uh, up to an hour honestly. And then, you know, once you get a consistent 120 grit, just go to 600, 1,000, 2,000, etc. Now, the head's a little bit different. The head is a squish band, and you don't want to sand that away too much because, you know, that's the uh, insides of your two-stroke engine. A squish pan effectively gives you the, you know, the compression you want, etc. So, what I'm going to be doing is just sanding this slightly. Um, but the problem with that is you're not actually sanding the gasket surface. If you had a flat head... Um, basically you wouldn't have to be worrying about the squish band, but because this head has a squish band, there's really no point of sanding it. But, like I said, if the flat head's there, you'll actually be sanding this, not the squish band. 
So that's kind of how that works. So I would mostly, for a general application, work on the cylinder itself, opposed to the head. And you can see with a little bit of work, we've managed to get our cylinder looking pretty good. After that, make sure to clean it off with isopropyl alcohol, get all the metal shavings out of your engine, and reassemble. So the fifth and final cheap upgrade is modifying your intake manifold. Now, modifying your cylinder is a lot more sketchy. You know, if you mess this up, you're $40-$50 in debt. Uh, with one of these, 10 bucks. So, you can see inside your cylinder, you have your transfer ports, you have your exhaust port, and you have your intake port over here, which is kind of hard to see. Let me push the piston down. Um... Gotta go lower here. Yeah, right there. So there's your intake port. And basically these ports have a specific timing. Um, you know, your transfer duration. That can be different on each engine. Uh, I don't want to get too in-depth into this, but I know for a fact if you raise the exhaust a little bit on the upstroke, it will effectively increase the exhaust flow. On the intake, if you lower it a little bit, you can see that's why your intake is so low. It's because it's actually going under the piston into the crankcase, not up into the combustion chamber right away. So, I know that sounded confusing for the beginners, but that's just kind of how port timing works. So, back to the intake. Basically, what I mean is the port timing of your engine is way more detrimental to your performance, while well, this making it larger in diameter will effectively increase the airflow on the intake port. Uh, but it's pretty simple. All you're going to need is a medium-sized Dremel, and you can get these at Canadian Tire, you can get them at Harbor Freight for like 30 40 bucks or so, and they'll last you a lifetime. But, with that being said, just go ahead and enlarge it. You want to start with a carbide bit, get to the size you want, because it's going to take you a while to get it to that size. And then move up to a sanding bit, and get it nice and smooth, and then finish it with a polish. And that's pretty much it. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one as always. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and stay tuned, because currently I'm building a mini bike, and I have the engine ready. I went ahead and painted the tank, got it running, and cleaned the carburetor, and I've currently painted the frame, and I'm waiting for a clutch and chain. So stay tuned, guys, because the riding videos are coming up very, very soon, and I can't wait to rip this thing. Alright, see you guys in the next one.